So if you've ever looked into software that can clone or make backups of your system drive, then you've probably come across a few different options that can accomplish this. Windows has a built-in utility that can create backup images, but the available options are somewhat restrictive. There's also third-party software from various companies that have free and paid versions of their software. But there seems to be a recent trend where the free versions are becoming more restrictive with the features they offer, and some companies are phasing out their free version altogether, forcing users to dish out money on software that used to be free. Well, thanks to free and open source software such as RescueZilla, PC users no longer need to be at the mercy of giant multinational corporations. RescueZilla is actually the younger brother of CloneZilla, which is also an open source disk imaging application. But CloneZilla's interface is extremely basic and outdated, and can be somewhat confusing for casual users. RescueZilla fixes that by providing an attractive and easy to use GUI. It works for both Windows and Linux. But most importantly, not only is it free as in free beer, but it's also free as in free speech. So with that in mind, let's now go over how to use RescueZilla. I'll be showing how to do two things today. First I'll be cloning a Windows 10 system to a larger SSD. And then afterwards, I'll show how to create a backup image of a Linux system and how to restore it. Alright, so let's get started. First we need to download RescueZilla, so let's go to the download page on the official site and download the latest stable version here. I'll leave the link in the video description. Now this file is a bootable ISO file, so we'll need to load this onto bootable media such as a USB drive to run it. I recommend using Ventoy to create your bootable media. If you're not familiar with Ventoy, then you should check out my video guide that goes over everything you need to know to get it set up. So after loading RescueZilla onto my Ventoy drive, I'll now reboot my computer so I can boot the Ventoy drive, and then select RescueZilla from the list. You'll first see this screen where you can select your preferred language. Use the arrow keys, then press enter to choose your selection. Then go to Start RescueZilla. It might take a minute to load, then you'll be presented with the main screen here. So let's start by cloning a Windows 10 system drive. Windows is currently installed on a 240GB SSD, and I'll be cloning it to a 256GB SSD, which is slightly larger. Both of these drives are internal drives that are already installed in my PC. This method will copy the entire drive to the new one. And then afterwards we can expand the main partition to fill up the entire drive, since you'll probably want access to that extra space. Start by clicking the clone button, then you'll be given a description of the process. Click next to continue. The drives in your system will be scanned and listed. Now select the source drive that contains the operating system. In my case I have Windows installed on drive number 2, so I'll select that and hit next. Now select the destination drive. In my case it will be drive number 4. Now you'll be given the chance to customize the partitions, but in most cases you don't want to modify this. All the partitions should be copied, so just click next. Now you'll be given a summary of the operations it's about to perform. Also take note of the rescue option at the bottom. If your original drive is starting to fail, then there might be corrupted data on it in which case you'll want to select this option. If your source drive is failing, then there's a chance the corrupted data can't be recovered, but selecting this option will give you the best chance at successfully cloning the drive. Now click Next, and then click Yes to acknowledge that the destination drive is about to be erased and overwritten with the cloned copy of your source drive. This process might take a while depending on the size and speed of your drives. When the cloning finishes, click Next, and then exit out of the application. Now I'm going to expand the main partition on the newly cloned drive so that it fills up all the available space. This step is only necessary if you clone to a larger drive. To do this, we'll use the Gparted app which comes bundled with RescueZilla, so double-click the shortcut that's on the desktop here. 
First, make sure the new drive is the one that's selected. If not, you can change it here. Now we can see the list of partitions on the drive, with the main one being this partition that's 222.94 GB large in my case. The unallocated space at the end is what we want to add to this main partition. However, you'll notice there's this smaller partition in between them that's only 530 megabytes. We'll need to first move this partition to the end of the drive so that the unallocated space can be combined with the main partition. So I'll first right click the smaller partition, then select resize slash move. Now change the value for free space following to 0 megabytes and push enter. You'll notice the value that used to be there now moved up to the free space preceding entry. This is what we want, so then hit resize slash move to confirm and click OK to this warning message. By the way, this partition will only be there when cloning a Windows system. If you're cloning a Linux system then you won't need to do this step since that partition won't be there. Now let's resize the main partition, so right click it and go to resize slash move. We want this partition to use all the available space, so you'll want to add the free space to the size of this partition here. But instead of calculating the exact number, you can simply enter a really large number such as 5 terabytes like I just did, and the size will automatically change to the maximum available space. Make sure the free space preceding and free space following both show as zero, then click resize slash move. You might end up with an unallocated space of 1 megabyte, but that's fine. Now click the green check mark at the top to start the operations. Once it's done, click close and exit from the application. Then click the menu at the bottom left corner to either shut down or reboot your computer. If you're not planning to use the old drive anymore, then you can shut down the computer and remove the old drive before booting up again. If you don't remove the old drive, then you need to make sure to change the boot options in the BIOS so that the computer boots from the new drive instead. So after doing that, I've now booted Windows on the new drive and everything works as expected. So that's how you would clone a drive. Now let's go over how to take a backup image of a drive, then restore it. Taking backups is different from cloning because now we're saving a copy as a file on a storage drive. This storage drive could be an internal hard drive, an external USB drive, or a network attached storage, among other things. Taking a backup image is meant for long term storage in case something happens to your original drive, in which case you can simply buy a new drive and restore the image to that new drive, and you'll be back up and running like it was before. It also allows you to easily take multiple images at different time points and have all of them saved and ready to be restored by just picking one. So let's go over how to do this. I'm using the same PC as before, but have replaced Windows with Ubuntu this time. But the process will still be the same for a Windows system. So I'll boot up RescueZilla again, and at the main menu I'll select Backup this time. Now choose which drive you want to backup and click Next. Click Next again to confirm you want to backup all the partitions on that drive. Now you can choose the destination where the image file will be saved to. If the drive is connected directly to your computer, then leave the first option checked and select the drive to be used. Also notice the other option called Shared Over a Network. This is what you'll need to select if you want to save the image to a network attached storage or other computer on your network that has a file server such as Samba, NFS, and other protocols. But I'll be saving the image to an internal 500GB storage drive, so I'll select it from the list and hit Next. Now click Browse, and you'll be given the opportunity to specify which folder you want to save the image in. So I'll select this folder I already created earlier called New Images. You can also create new folders by clicking this icon in the top right. Click OK once you've selected the folder, and then click Next. Now you can customize the name of the image file if you want, but the default one is fine since it contains the date and time. You can also provide an optional description if you'd like, then click Next. Now you can choose which compression method to use. The default is gzip, which is what I recommend since it's pretty fast and provides good compression. 
But there's also a few other options you can choose such as DZIP2 if you'd like. Now select the compression level to use. The default is 6 which provides a good balance of speed versus compression level. If you want the smallest file size possible, then drag the slider all the way to the right. But doing this will also increase the time it takes to do the compression and decompression. So only select this if you have a powerful system. I'll stick with the default value of 6, and then select next. Then you'll be shown a summary of the operations it's about to perform. So click next to confirm, and it will begin the backup process. Again, this might take a while depending on how fast your PC is. The number of cores your CPU has will be the biggest factor in how long this takes. Alright, now it's done backing up the image, so let's go over how to restore that image to a drive in the event that you need to do so. I'll boot up RescueZilla and then select Restore from the home screen. Now select the image location, so I'll select the same drive I saved the image to. Now click Browse and select the folder that it was saved to and hit OK. Now you can see the image file is listed here. If you have multiple images saved to this location, then they will also appear in this list as well. Select the image you want to recover, then click Next. Now select the destination drive that will be overwritten with the image. I'll be selecting the slightly larger drive again, which means after the restoration process is done, I'll need to expand the partition to fill the entire drive. Click Next to continue, then click Next to confirm you want to restore all the partitions. And then Next again to confirm the operations it's about to do. Again, this might take a while, but once it's finished, click Next, and then exit out of the RescueZilla app. Now open Gparted and follow the same steps as I did before. But this time you'll notice that extra partition that was present with Windows isn't there this time with Linux. So the process is slightly easier when restoring a Linux system. All we need to do is resize the main partition this time. So right click it and go to resize slash move. Then max out the value for the new size and make sure the free space preceding and free space following both show zero. Then hit resize slash move. Now click the green check mark at the top and hit apply to start the operation. Now that it's done, I'll go to the menu at the bottom left and restart the computer. Make sure the new drive is the first boot option in the BIOS. And as you can see, Ubuntu is now booting up from the new drive. Well, that wraps up my guide on how to use RescueZilla, which in my opinion is the best backup software available for PCs. It's easy to use and compatible with both Windows and Linux. But most importantly, RescueZilla is free and open source software, so you never have to worry about losing features or purchasing a license to use it. I hope you all found this guide useful. If you did, then be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Also, feel free to drop a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and let me know how well RescueZilla worked for you. As always, thanks for watching, and see you next time.